Let's take another look at our ag commodity trade, and uh, we're going to get some expert analysis here this time around by checking in with Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri. And Brian, good to have you on board with us here today. Uh, I assume the grain side of the ledger here is kind of quiet heading into the report, which comes out in about 45 minutes from right now. And in case uh, anyone just crawled out from under a rock, we're going to be getting the crop production numbers, mainly for South America, and then also our supply and demand numbers. And then what is the trade going to look at after that? Yeah, the main thing we're looking at ahead of this report is those big uh, export announcements this morning. The big surprise, of course, was selling soybeans to Argentina for the first time in 10 years. They are really short on their product this year. And this possibly is a resale to China or another country, and they possibly could be using it for domestic purposes. But either way, it's a pretty bullish sign. Soybeans reacting to that today with some big gains, while corn and wheat just seem content to wait until the report's released. A little profit taking being noted in the wheat market, despite uh, uh, crop condition ratings that fell more than expected, as these world ending stocks for wheat have tended to be a little bearish on the monthly reports. And so we are seeing a, just a little setback going into the report, anticipating that. Since that Chinese tariff talk broke uh, last Wednesday morning as we came into work, this makes four out of five days, I believe, where we've had over 400,000 tons of soybeans sold, uh, you know, in the morning update from USDA. I think we only had one day where that wasn't the case. And, and this morning, over a half a million tons booked. Of course, part of that is for next marketing year for the new crop. but. Well, I tell you what, uh, it seems like they're coming in there to uh, snatch up some bargains here in case things uh, uh, do get kind of tight later on, right? Yeah, just really no surprise that when we're kind of tight on, on world supplies, because Argentina's had a reduction in their in their crop size, that uh, exporters with a big drop in prices are going to come to the United States, not only because of the concerns about a tariff maybe six months down the road, but also because we had such a sharp drop in prices. We dropped uh, 50 cents in the overnight trade when the uh, tariffs was announced last week, and that really ushered in quite a bit of buying. But even after we've gained that 50 cents and even more back since that time frame, we're still seeing very strong export sales, four sales in two days this week. Big rebound in soybeans now. Uh, we had kind of a, a, a very quiet open, but look at July. Soybeans now eight and three quarters higher at 1066 and a quarter, getting close to the high of the day now. And November now nine and a quarter higher at 1052 and a half. That's getting kind of a bold move heading into the report here. Meanwhile, looking at the corn on the corn market, uh, we have the July contract down three quarters yet at 398 and a quarter. And we have the December down a half at 414 and a quarter. And moving on to the wheat trade. Right now on the wheat, we have July Chicago wheat back to down three quarters at 505 and a quarter. It's been on both sides of unchanged today. In Kansas City wheat this morning, we have the July contract now down a penny and a quarter. Last trade, 540 and a half. It did get up as high as 544 and a quarter there earlier. And in Minneapolis wheat on the spring wheat market, we have the July up three quarters at 637 and a quarter. The far out deferreds are a little weaker. Cotton market right now, to get you updated there, we have the July contract 36 higher. We're now trading at 83.12, and we have the December new crop cotton priced at 78.23 uh, cents per pound. That is up five points, as it uh, seems right now here on the board. All right, uh, Brian, you, you talked about the fact that we have the report coming up here in uh, about 40 minutes from right now. What kind of yields do you think USDA may expect out of uh, Brazil or Argentina here today? Well, you know, in Brazil, they're going to see an increase in soybean production, um, probably not much change in corn. That's what uh, some of the private estimates are looking at, a record amount of soybeans being produced in Brazil. But in Argentina, completely different story. We're going to look for a reduction in both corn and soybeans. Uh, out of that country, falling probably you know falling from last month and probably right in line with what some of the pre-report estimates are, are looking at. Okay, we'll come back in a moment and we'll analyze what's going on in the livestock trade. Lots of gyrations to talk about and we'll cover it when we come back. And we're back talking with Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions right now. He is based in Springfield, Missouri. And as we take a look at the livestock trade here, Brian, I had to ask you about uh, uh, how much impact, if any, we are seeing from the equity markets and their wild volatility. Is any of that investor money coming back toward the ag commodities like uh, maybe the cattle or hogs? 
Yeah, it seemed like uh, for a while we saw a little bit of a rally in the cattle, and we just cannot sustain it here. The show list numbers are coming in larger than a week ago. And early part of the week, yesterday morning, a lot of the thought on the cash markets would be at least steady, but these show list numbers are coming in a surprising amount larger, and that has really tempered the cash. And so we're seeing some weakness in the cattle market here, despite a surge in the equity markets. So cattle really struggling, just too much supply out there at this time. And uh, we've got decent demand, but unless we get the cattle weights down similar to what we did last year, we're going to really struggle, I think, to sustain any rallies in the cattle market. Last I knew, the commodity funds had some really large net long positions. Are they still maintaining those at this point? Yeah, they still are. And, and, you know, potentially that could be a real negative to the market if we start to break futures even harder that the funds get out of these positions. That would be a, a negative. But at this point, they're maintaining their long positions, and uh, that is supporting prices. Let's look at the prices on the live cattle board right now, and we'll see uh, where the market is heading. Uh, you know, <clears throat> we talked about it earlier this morning. When the markets opened up, I mentioned that it was very suspicious. It was just like yesterday, where we opened up and had some strong gains on the day, and then we faded about a half hour into the open. And sure enough, we're back lower again. We have June live cattle now at 102.28 on the day. And now we're about $2 off our earlier high. We're down 18 cents from our close yesterday, even though the nearby April is still higher. Uh, we have August live cattle down 32 at 102.43. Uh, what about on the feeder cattle side? Have they turned around as well? Currently, you have April down 7, May down 27. We're at 135.25 right now. And that's two dollars and forty cents off our earlier high this morning. We have August down fifteen at one forty ninety. So the the big gyrations continue here in this cattle market. This has been a day to day occurrence here ever since last Tuesday. Yeah, it really has. You know, and we talked about uh, last week a little bit of that we've put in that technical reversal last week, but we haven't broken through any significant resistance point. And that is a concern for the trade is until we break through a downtrend line or a certain resistance point on the charts, we're likely to see continued uh, technical and fund related selling. All right. I wanted to take a look at uh, the lean hogs here and then also the uh, chart pattern on them. Uh, just to allude to the fact that uh, you were talking about the charts on the cattle. We have May lean hogs up 93. The first two contracts are higher. But the June contract, where a lot of the volume is centered, is down three cents at 75.85. Now it's already at a steep premium to the nearby April anyway. It's about uh, almost $22, I guess a little over $22 above on that uh, June contract. So it's at a steep, steep premium. Uh, on the charts, we were talking about it earlier today. It looked like they busted out of that downward channel yesterday. And uh, early this morning, it looked like they had confirmation of follow through. But now, I guess it's a big question mark, huh? Yeah, technically, I would agree with all that. You took out a key resistance point on the June futures, which is the lead contract trading above 76.90. You took out that downward channel or that downtrend line. So technically, that's positive. The problem with trying to buy this market is it's $20 premium to the index. And there's not a lot of buying interest when you're that large of a premium uh, to the index. A lot of traders will want to buy a discount, not uh, a huge premium like that. And so I think that has kept some of the buying interest away from this hog market. Interesting, the way they're building that uh, big premium into those summer months from June on out. All right, thank you, Brian, for talking with us. Appreciate it very much. Brian Hoops, president of Midwest Market Solutions. He's based in Springfield, Missouri.